Hey guys, I'm Philip Wilder, and I have something so exciting to share with you guys today. Many of you know that I love writing novels, and in these novels it's really fun to put in these little nuggets that point towards major plot twists that will happen later on in the book. I do this because it's really cool to read back through and be like, oh my gosh, like, how did I not know that this is going to come and happen with all these little nuggets right here? Or maybe you'll read back through it the second time and see these nuggets and think, that's so cool that this is pointed out right here this early on in the story. Well, God is the best author, and he does the same thing. We call them Jesus sightings in the Old Testament because God, in many places, reveals what he's going to do way before it even happened, not just in prophecies, but in other things, particularly the Jewish feasts. So it's going to be really exciting. Let's get to it. So we're going to be looking at the Passover. Now many of you have probably heard about the Passover and how it points to Jesus, but we're going to be going more in depth to things that you might not have ever heard of before or thought of before. So stick around, it's going to get really exciting here. But there's three things that God does in these feasts, and I'll get to those three things in just a second. First, I want to read Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 through 24. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, go, to, go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans and kill the Passover lambs. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this right as a statute for you and your sons forever. Now, of course, this is God telling them what to do before the first Passover. But as you see at the very end there, verse 24, he tells them that they're going to observe this forever. So he's already telling them this is going to be a feast that you're going to continue to do forever. But in it, we see some main elements. One, you take a perfect unblemished lamb. It doesn't actually say unblemished here, but if you read in Leviticus where it talks about the Passover, it does. It has to be an unblemished lamb, a male lamb as well too, and you have to kill it on Passover and then use its blood to cover your doorposts so that the destroyer won't come and destroy the firstborn. So basically, through the blood of the lamb, you can probably see where this is going, death will pass over or we will pass through death and not be scathed. Okay, so there's three things that these feasts do, and I'm going to go quickly over the first two so I can really hang on this third one. But the first of which is God uses these feasts to show his heart and his character. God wants us to celebrate and come together as families and enjoy a good meal and enjoy good fellowship. God doesn't command us to do things that are bad or that are bad for us, God calls us to do things oftentimes that bring us a lot of joy. Unfortunately, sometimes our joy doesn't line up with what is really best for us. God calls us to do hard things that are typically best for us. But in this case, as far as these feasts go, God calls them to do something that is truly good and truly rewarding for us. The second thing that God does through these feasts is he reminds us how we should be grateful, how mighty he is and how he provided for us before and delivered us from hard things before. Particularly in, the, in this passage, God wants them to remember how he's passing, how he led them through this difficulty and brought them out of the difficulty in Egypt into the promised land. Also with this, God wants them to remember these things because he's going to fulfill in a sense these promises later on. He's painting the framework for what he's going to do in the future. And that third part is the fulfilled in Jesus. And that's what I want to hang on here. Jesus is the fulfillment of Passover. And I am not coming up with this. You've probably heard of this many times before. But if we skip a whole bunch of pages, 
That's a lot of time that passes between these pages right here. If we skip all these pages to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 through 8, it says, Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So two things I want you to remember out of that. One, Jesus is our Passover lamb that was sacrificed on our behalf. Two, leaven, how leaven symbolizes sin and how we should remove ourselves from the yeast or sin and become unleavened in a sense or like God because God is perfect without sin in a sense, unleavened. That's a lot of information that I'm asking you just to absorb. And the reason why is because of what I'm about to share now. First of all, Jesus very obviously is the Passover lamb. He literally died on Passover. And by his blood, we are freed from death so that we can once again be with God. But did you know there's a lot of symbolism in the Passover feast? For example, there's this one element of the Passover feast and it's called the Yatzak or the Yachats, the Yachats. Sorry, it's Hebrew and I don't speak Hebrew, believe it or not. But this symbol or tradition began long before Jesus, or at least as far as we know, long before Jesus. We don't know where it exactly came about, but it's quite possible that it was widely practiced by Jesus' time. Now, did you know that the Last Supper was actually a Passover Seder? Three of the four Gospels actually call it a Passover meal. And so in this Passover Seder, Jesus is doing the traditional Passover things. Well, one of the traditional Passover things during Jesus' time is the yachets, which is basically they have three pieces of unleavened bread. And they take one of them and they break it and hide it. And then later, the children will go and find it and they'll bring it back and they'll take that piece of bread that was hidden and they'll break it and they'll all eat it together at the very end of the meal. This is where it gets crazy. Okay, so first of all, the three pieces of unleavened bread. God is three in one, in a sense, three persons. And the unleavened bread is symbolizing something without sin or without yeast, which the feast of the unleavened bread happens right about the same time as the Passover. And in Leviticus, it's actually lumped together with the Passover meal. So it's kind of all the same thing. But basically, Jesus even says it himself, avoid the yeast of the Pharisees, or basically the sin of the Pharisees, or the false teachings. And so God is the one who is without sin. So these three pieces of unleavened bread very clearly symbolize who God is. Well, one of them is broken on Passover, just like how Jesus was broken on our behalf. And then he was laid away or hidden. And then later he comes back and is rejoined. And Jesus, during this Passover meal, we see that Jesus takes a piece of bread and he breaks it and he gives it to the disciples and says, eat this in remembrance of me. This is my body. Jesus literally during this Passover meal could have been breaking the yachets and saying, look, this piece of bread, one of these three is me. Eat this. It's my body being broken for you. That is a direct fulfillment of this tradition in Passover. Of course, this tradition wasn't given in the Bible or directly from God, but who knows where it came from. And I think it's quite possible that God brought in this tradition to point people to Jesus. Now it gets even crazier. The piece that is taken away and is later brought back, it's called the thikomen, which comes from a Greek word actually. And that Greek word means the one to come. Jesus was the one to come. How it's just unbelievable how crazy this is. But then Jesus takes it and he gives it to the disciples just as they would in a regular Passover Seder. Additionally, when Jesus says, this is my blood and passes the wine, traditionally in these Passover Seders, they would take a drink from this wine, this cup of wine and pass it between them all. Just another crazy way that Jesus brings all together at this Passover meal. And it's just crazy how God uses all of this to point people to Jesus in a completely undeniable way. God is so good. He's so good at planting little nuggets in beforehand that can point us towards what he's going to be doing in the future. I hope this can give us more uh, courage to believe and take God at his word because God is great at planning things out long before they happen. And we should also remember 
that God is the only one who can forgive us of our sins through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.